Final Cut Pro 10.6.6 is here and we have some new features as well as a few other little goodies. You do need macOS Monterey 12.6.6 in order to update Final Cut Pro, so bear that in mind. And with that said, let's start with the feature that I was most excited about after seeing Apple's Final Cut Pro on iPad video, the scene removal mask. For the scene removal mask to work, you kind of have to plan to use it because what you need to do is shoot on a tripod and you need to move out of the frame into the frame in order for the scene removal mask to do a good job. You can find the scene removal mask in the effects browser by heading over to the masks and keying category. And there it is, there's the new scene removal mask effect. And you can simply drag and drop that onto your clip. If you click on the question mark over here, Final Cut will give you a few tips on how to get the best results. Things like using a static background, using a stationary camera, capturing a few frames of the background without the subject at the beginning or the end, and then some additional tips to try and give you the best results. You don't have many options to customize the mask. You basically can choose the reference frame. On this clip, I have a second or so of me not in the frame. So I can select first frame or first frame plus one second to choose that as my reference frame. As you can see, the Kia did an okay job. It's not great by any means. There's a bit of flickering going on. And overall, I must say that I'm really disappointed with this feature. I thought it would be something a lot more like Keeper. Keeper is a great plugin that you can use to isolate subjects from the background. So I'll leave a link to that down below if you'd like to check that out. And if you'd like to see a dedicated video on Keeper, let me know in the comments down below. The demo on the iPad video made it seem like you could grab this moving subject and Apple would automatically just detect it and remove it. No rotoscoping, no green screen required but I don't think it's the rotoscope green screen killer that we all hoped it would be. It's, uh, it's a little bit disappointing, to be honest. If you take a shot like this where the person doesn't leave the screen and you add the scene removal mask, the results are pretty terrible, obviously. I can see it working in some instances if you have a talking head of someone on a white background and the client didn't have a green screen, for example, and you want to remove that background and replace it, it would probably do an okay job, but if you had Keeper, it would do that anyway. Next up, let's take a look at some of the new additions to Final Cut Pro in the form of dynamic backgrounds, dynamic titles, and dynamic transitions. If you head over to the titles in your browser window and look for dynamic titles, you can see a bunch of new titles here that now come built into Final Cut Pro. Some of them are pretty cool, nothing too groundbreaking, but it's always cool to have some new title options. So these are pretty cool. Then under the generators section, if you scroll all the way down, you've got dynamic backgrounds. Again, nothing too groundbreaking, but they're pretty cool if you want to add some titles on top of them. And then we also have some dynamic transitions. I don't know personally how often I would use transitions like this, although I have used this marquee transition in this video. The HDR SDR conform feature is a welcome addition in my opinion, because if you've ever shot something on your iPhone, or on another camera in an HDR profile, in other words, a high dynamic range profile, you might see that your footage is always blown out when you drop it onto your timeline. What you'd normally have to do is drop the clip onto your timeline, head over to effects, go to the color category, add the HDR tools effect, and then switch from HLG to Rec. 709 SDR. But let's delete that and the clip. And now in your settings, you go to Final Cut Pro Preferences. Under General, you have an automatic color conform for HDR checkbox. This is on by default when you update, so you don't have to turn it on. I just did this to show you what it looks like. But now if you drag that clip onto your timeline, it's automatically converted to SDR. Another thing you might notice in the color category here in your effects is this color adjustments effect. You can also find it in the color inspector by adding a correction. So this is your typical slider based kind of color adjustment. So if you like that Lightroom style of grading where you have a bunch of sliders, this might be a great option for you. I'll disable that for now because we also have a bunch of colorboard presets and you can hover over these and scrub through them to see what they'll look like on your footage. Let's say you find one that you, you really like. I haven't found one yet. Let's just go for this cool look. You can double click to add it to your footage. And what it is, is it's a color board already populated with some adjustments here. So you can go in and tweak that if you like. Over and above the color board presets, we also have some new color grading presets. Again, you can scrub over these to get a preview of what it will look like on your footage. And these are kind of like little filters you can add, which is pretty nice if you just want to add a quick look to your clip. 
Another new feature is some audio effects. So if I scroll down to my audio effects here and I go to spaces, I have a really cool new Chromaverb reverb plugin, which gives you some nice control over your reverb if you want to add reverb to dialogue for any reason or to your sound effects. Also new in the effects under EQ is a vintage tube EQ. And you can play around here to get some really cool effects. And there's also a bunch of presets that you can use. This is a Logic plugin, so you have a bunch of music related type presets. There is also a new DSA plugin, a DSA 2. But unfortunately, that's about as exciting as it gets for new effects. There's also a new export option. If you go over to File, Share, you'll see that we have a new HEVC or high efficiency video codec export option. And if I come over into the settings under video codec, you can even export a 10 bit HLG file, which is really nice. And the format is an MP4 file. There are also a couple of additional enhancements like the ability to use the new ProRes RAW settings. You can also install a ProRes RAW plugin from your camera manufacturer. And there's also a bug fix for an issue where multicams would go black. I experienced that quite a lot, so I'm excited to see if that is really fixed. And then there are also a couple of other bug fixes, which is what I think this update is all about. It's more about bug fixes than new features, which is honestly very disappointing. I was hoping for a whole lot more with this update. As with all Final Cut Pro updates, there's bound to be something that stops working. Companies like Color Finale and Motion VFX have warned people against upgrading right now. I've tried all my Motion VFX plugins and they all work as well as Color Finale, but I have found that Cinematch and Nitrate, both from Film Convert, are not working on Final Cut Pro 10.6.6. So if you use those plugins, maybe you want to hold off on updating. I think the main reason for this 10.6.6 update is to make it compatible with the Final Cut Pro iPad app so that you can import Final Cut Pro projects from the iPad onto the Mac. I don't have an iPad, so I can't test that, but there are some guys out there like Matthew O'Brien and Dylan Bates who are making content around FCP on the iPad. So if you're interested in the iPad version, make sure you subscribe to both of them so that you can stay up to date with what's happening on the iPad version and the integration between the iPad version and the Mac OS version. If you do decide to update, make sure you watch this video before you do, because I'll give you some tips on the best practices for updating Final Cut Pro so that you can roll back to a previous version if you need to.